On November 14th, SpaceX successfully completed a full-duration static fire test of 14 Super Heavy rocket engines for the first time. Next test is more or less 20 seconds firing with max oxygen fill to test autogenous pressurization, possibly one more static fire, then orbital launch attempt, Elon Musk revealed. After all, for the first orbital launch, our goal is to get into orbit without exploding. To be totally frank, if it takes off without blowing off the stand, stage zero, which is much harder to replace than the booster, that will be a victory. So please do not blow up on the stand. Indeed, even with 33 engines on booster firing, it's now a big problem with SpaceX stage zero. Let's analyze everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As we talked about in the last episode, Concrete chunks were immediately falling to the ground after the test of 14 engines on B-7 recently. Besides, we can see the paint blasted off in OLM, fuel line insulation burnt at the bottom. However, that's certainly not the biggest nightmare. In the future, with all engines on Booster 7, that means 33 new Raptor 2 engines capable of generating a total of about 7,600 metric tons of thrust, almost certainly making it the most powerful liquid rocket ever tested. Even if all 33 engines never reach more than 60% of their maximum thrust to 230 tons, they will likely break the Soviet N-1 rocket's record of 4,500 tons of thrust at sea level. It would also be the most rocket engines ever simultaneously ignited on one vehicle. However, the danger to this bet is immense. Even NASA is worried that a Starship explosion near LC-39A could cut off the space agency's only means of launching astronauts to the ISS. Therefore, its desire is for a backup launch pad. Remember about Saturn V? There was a good reason why the Saturn V flame pit was so huge and why the rocket was so high off the ground. There are more than a few popular myths that have permeated the annals of space history, including one that the launch of the Saturn V rocket was so loud, the sound itself melted concrete and set fire to grass more than a mile away. Sadly, as many myths go, that's simply not true. Researchers at Brigham Young University, or BYU, in Utah have created a physics-based model of a Saturn V rocket launch to estimate the acoustic levels, determining that it had a value of 203 decibels. That nearly matches NASA's own recording of 204 decibels based on a test of Saturn V's first stage run at NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. For context, sounds above 200 decibels are extremely loud. An ambulance siren is about 120 decibels, while jet engines are about 140 decibels at takeoff. And that's according to the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. Decibels are logarithmic, and so every 10 decibels is an order of magnitude increase, says BYU professor Kent L. G., the lead author of a paper on the team's research, and he said that in a statement. 170 decibels would be equivalent to 10 aircraft engines. 200 would be 10,000 engines. While 200 plus decibels is certainly loud enough to rupture an eardrum, Saturn V launch viewers were kept three and a half miles or four kilometers away from the pad for safety. It's not loud enough to melt concrete or start grass fires more than a mile away. So why? The team suspects those effects would have been caused by radiative heat from the plume or debris, not sound. While the new Space Launch System, SLS rocket, will be larger and louder than the Saturn V, NASA has since implemented a sound suppression system into its launch pads. For SLS, 450,000 gallons or 2 million liters of water will rush onto the pad during launch, reducing the rocket's acoustical level. This system will not only protect viewers' ears, but also protect the launch pad. Now, you might be wondering how this relates to the Starship launch pad. Honestly, the Starship launch pad can't be as good as NASA's SLS. Meanwhile, the Super Heavy booster was equipped with 33 Raptor 2 engines and a total thrust of 75,315 kilonewtons. That's the largest payload Saturn V carried to LEO was the 90-ton spaceship Skylab. For this, 10 engines and a total thrust of 40,000 kilonewtons sufficed. That is, the Starship booster is almost twice as powerful as the entire Saturn V rocket. So do you think the Starship launch pad can still be safe? I'm worried about the concrete of the launch pad. You know, once those pieces of cement break, there's definitely no different from ballistics with unbelievable power that'll shoot into other components around the launch pad. And many other collapses like tank farms, pipes, and OLT could definitely happen. Anyway, the SpaceX team is trying to find ways to minimize the risk. 
Specifically, the teams have been installing shielding on the orbital launch mount legs and also tested the fire suppression system. The fire suppression system was tested twice during the spin prime test on November 10th. The first test came during the spin prime test by using just the nitrogen pressure system to displace methane gas from the air, and the second came later in the test window as a test of the entire system. I only can say this month, hopefully, but you can rest assured that this is bound to happen as Starship just became another big part of NASA. The NASA agency just awarded SpaceX a $1.15 billion contract for what's formerly known as Option B of the Human Landing System or HLS contract. Option B covers upgrades to the Starship lander originally selected for HLS by NASA in April 2021 for $2.9 billion. The option also includes a second crewed demonstration landing mission. Continuing our collaborative efforts with SpaceX through Option B furthers our resilient plan for regular crewed transportation to the lunar surface and establishing a long-term human presence under Artemis, says Lisa Watson Morgan, NASA HLS program manager. This critical work will help us focus on the development of sustainable, service-based lunar landers anchored to NASA's requirements for regularly recurring missions to the lunar surface. NASA announced its intent to exercise Option B in March when it unveiled its Sustaining Lunar Development SLD effort to fund the development of the second Artemis crewed lunar lander. SpaceX couldn't compete for the SLD award, but NASA said it would instead exercise the option in SpaceX's original HLS award to upgrade Starship for later Artemis missions that will carry more astronauts and remain on the moon for longer periods. When NASA announced its intent to exercise Option B, it wasn't clear when the second mission would fly. However, agency officials said last month that the Option B mission would be Artemis IV, a mission that NASA previously planned to devote to work on the Lunar Gateway and not include a landing. The lander selected for development under SLD would fly its demonstration mission no earlier than Artemis V. SpaceX is continuing preparations for the first orbital launch attempt of Starship at Boca Chica, Texas test site. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, tweeted afterward the company would follow the test with a 20-second engine test, possibly one more static fire, then orbital launch attempt. At an October 31st meeting of the NASA Advisory Council Human Exploration and Operations Committee, Mark Karasik, Deputy Associate Administrator for Artemis Campaign Development at NASA, said the first Starship orbital launch attempt could take place as soon as early December. That schedule depends on both testing of the vehicle as well as receipt of launch licenses from the Federal Aviation Administration. He said NASA was closely following the upcoming test flight as one of the milestones in the development of the lunar lander version of Starship. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.